Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics. In this session, we will discuss the resistance capacitor triggering technique for an SCR. Now, before we begin the discussion on resistance capacitance triggering, which is commonly called as RC triggering circuit, let us understand why RC was first and foremost proposed in the place where there was already R triggering technique. So, we start first by stating the disadvantages of R triggering technique and then we continue to the RC triggering technique. Now, coming to the disadvantages of R triggering, first the triggering angle alpha of R triggering technique is greatly dependent on the SCR's gate threshold current which as we know can vary widely even among SCRs of a given type and is also highly temperature dependent. In addition, the triggering angle alpha can be varied only up to a maximum value of 90 degree in our triggering circuit. This is because the supply voltage is maximum at its 90 degree point and the gate current has to reach IGT which is the gate threshold current somewhere between 0 to 90 degree if it will if at all. This limitation means that the load voltage waveform can only be varied from alpha equals 0 degree to alpha equals 90 degrees. So that actually was the disadvantages of resistance triggering technique. With that we come to the RC triggering technique. We first and foremost start with the half wave resistance capacitor triggering. Then we continue to the discussion of full wave resistance capacitance triggering. Right. Consider the RC half wave circuit as shown here. By using the RC network as shown in the diagram, a larger variation in the value of the triggering angle alpha can be obtained by changing the phase and amplitude of the gate current. For the given half wave RC triggering circuit, the triggering angle can be varied from 0 to 180 degree by varying the value of the resistor R. In the negative half cycle of the input supply, the capacitor C charges through diode D2 with the lower plate, lower plate positive to the peak supply voltage Vm. This capacitor voltage remains constant at minus Vm until supply voltage attains zero value. Now, as the SCR anode voltage passes through zero and becomes positive, the capacitor C begins to charge through R from the initial voltage Vm. When the capacitor charges to positive voltage equal to gate trigger voltage Vgt, the SCR is triggered. After this, the capacitor holds to a small positive voltage as that can be seen in the diagram here. Let me come back to the diagram a little later. We will identify different parameters that are shown in the waveforms when I come to the waveform discussion. Let us complete the theoretical aspects here. Now, during the negative half cycle, during the negative half cycle of the input supply, the diode D1 prevents the breakdown of the gate to cathode junction. So, this is basically used in order to make sure no negative voltage reaches the gate terminal of the SCR. In the range of power frequencies, the value of R and C for zero output voltage is given by RC must be greater than 1.3 into capital T divided by 2 which is 4 divided by omega where capital T equals to 1 divided by F is the period of AC line frequency in seconds. Now coming back to the discussion as already said the thyristor will turn on when the capacitor voltage Vc equals the gate threshold voltage Vgt provided the gate current IGT is available at the gate terminal. <coughs> Therefore, the maximum value of R that should be given for this circuitry can be estimated as 
the supply voltage must be greater than or equal to the gate threshold current multiplied by r plus the capacitor voltage itself but as we know the capacitor voltage is the sum of gate threshold voltage plus the diode d1 voltage drop therefore vs equals to igt multiplied by r retained as it is plus vc is vgt plus vd1 is taken so i rewrite this equation to obtain the value of r now here it should be noted that vs is the instantaneous supply voltage at which the thyristor will turn on finally equation 1 and equation 4 will help us to find suitable values for the resistor r and capacitor c right so that is about the half wave rc triggering circuit finally coming to the waveforms here we have two different set of waveforms the first set of waveform is when the alpha is very large so this quite obviously will occur when the value of r is very large now coming to the other one alpha is small this will occur when the value of r is again small now the overall idea behind connecting r and alpha is that if the variable resistor is very high the capacitor charges slowly therefore the gate current reaches the gate threshold current for a higher value of alpha this is very similar to what we have seen for resistance triggering also in simple words the capacitor voltage needs to be at least equal to or greater than the diode v1 voltage drop plus the minimum voltage required to trigger the gate of the thyristor so we will represent that as vgt and let this be vd1 so when the capacitor voltage becomes equal to or greater than vd1 plus vgt the thyristor will be triggered now the overall question is when will the capacitor attain that value now this time constant is related directly to the value r which is our variable resistor now as the value of r is increased the rate of charging of the capacitor decreases and if the value of r is decreased the rate of charging of the capacitor increases so the rate of charging will enable the value of vg which is the gate voltage to attain vgt at a faster rate so that is why we have given two separate set of waveforms here let us start as we have started the discussion that is in the negative half cycle of the input supply the diode d2 is turned on and the capacitor charges to minus vm okay you can see here in the negative half cycle the capacitor this uh, waveform or what you are looking at let me just zoom in a little right this uh, discontinuous line waveform what you are looking is the capacitor voltage right so in the negative half cycle of the input supply the capacitor reaches to a minus vm at the peak of the negative half cycle now since the capacitor is taken as a rapidly charging but slowly discharging it will hold on in an ideal scenario to the voltage at which it had attained its peak that is minus vm however due to leakage uh, charges the capacitor will lose some charge and that is why this line what you are looking at is not actually a horizontal line but in fact a slanted one however this leakage is negligible so you can almost assume this has to be a horizontal line right in the positive off cycle of the input supply when you start the positive off cycle let me come back to the circuitry so diode d2 is reverse biased now the capacitor starts to charge in fact it starts to first discharge from the previous discharge value which is minus vm and charges through r now it depends upon how fast the capacitor charges so the value of r is in fact very very important here if the value of r is very high the capacitor charges slowly and if the value of r is low the capacitor charges fastly now coming to this you can see at the beginning of the positive off cycle the voltage across the capacitor is some value around minus vm now as the input voltage increases the capacitor slowly starts to discharge from minus vm till zero and it continues to charge till the capacitor voltage becomes either equal to or greater than some 
value VGT where VGT is the gate threshold voltage. Now the moment the capacitor voltage becomes equal to the gate threshold voltage, the capacitor is triggered. This is the output voltage waveform and you can see the output will appear across the load. And this is the uh, thyristor waveform and when the thyristor is triggered, its voltage drop across the anode to cathode becomes equal to zero in ideal conditions, otherwise it is the threshold voltage drop. Right, in the negative half cycle, since we are discussing, please note, a half wave or resistance capacitor triggering. In the negative half cycle, the thyristor never triggers, so the load voltage is always zero, irrespective of whether the value of R is high or low. Now, coming to the second set of waveforms here, uh, this is for the value of R which is very low. Now, when the value of R is very low, the capacitor in the positive half cycle starts to charge very quickly. Let us see how. You see, in the negative half cycle, the capacitor has charged to minus Vm and in the beginning of the positive half cycle, it is around minus Vm. But since the value of R is very low, the capacitor discharges from minus Vm to zero and charges to uh, a value of VGT at a very faster rate. If you look at the slope of the line for R high and R low, you can probably understand the rate at which the capacitor is charging. Now, since the capacitor is charging very fast, it will attain the value of VGT for a very small value of alpha. So, the thyristor will trigger whenever VC reaches VGT and for the case where R is very low, VC reaches VGT for a very small value of alpha and you will immediately see a output voltage appearing which is as you can see here and at the same instant the thyristor voltage becomes ideally zero and practically otherwise it is VT. Right. So, this is the case of half wave RC triggering circuit. Now, coming to the full wave resistance capacitance triggering, uh, the advantages of resistance capacitance full wave over half wave can be understood by understanding some specific points about the half wave triggering. Let us discuss them first. For the half wave RC triggering circuit, the power can be delivered to the load only during the positive half cycle of the input supply because the thyristor conducts only when it is forward biased. This limitation can be overcome in several ways, one of which is the full wave RC triggering circuit. In the circuit diagram shown here, the AC line voltage is converted into pulsating DC by the full wave diode bridge. This allows the SCR to be triggered on for both half cycles of the input supply which doubles the available power to the load. In the circuit, the initial voltage from which the capacitor C charges is essentially zero. The capacitor C is set to this low positive voltage with the upper plate positive by the clamping action of the SCR gate. For this reason, the charging time constant RC must be chosen longer than that for half wave RC triggering in order to delay the triggering angle. When the capacitor charges to a value or a voltage equal to the gate threshold voltage of the thyristor, the SCR triggers and the rectified output voltage given as VDC appears across the load as VL. Lastly, the value of RC for a full wave resistance capacitance triggering can be obtained from the following equations. RC must be greater than or equal to 50 into capital T divided by 2 where capital T is the period equal to 1 by F which is the frequency, line frequency of the input AC. Also, the value of resistance R must be less than or equal to Vs minus Vgt supply voltage minus the gate threshold voltage whole divided by the gate current, the gate threshold current. Now, coming back to the circuit diagram, let me just uh, discuss a little in detail about the working. Initially, you can set the capacitor to be at zero. Now, since it is the capacitor value is kept at zero and 
if we use the same capacitor as what we have used for the half wave resistance uh, capacitance to giving circuit then the capacitor will charge to vgt at a faster rate in order to avoid that the values of r and c have to change according to the equations that we have given here now coming to the operation you keep the value of the capacitor at time t is equals to 0 mean it means the voltage across the capacitor at time t equals to 0 as 0 in the positive off cycle of the input supply the capacitor charges in the negative off cycle once again we are using a bridge rectifier therefore the capacitor once again charges now the overall idea here is in the positive off cycle diode d1 and d2 conduct the capacitor charges at a certain rate which is decided by the value of the variable resistor r and once the thyristor is triggered the capacitor discharges from that instant till it becomes zero through the gate circuitry itself so in the beginning of the negative off cycle the capacitor is once again ready to charge from zero this is what is the original idea now coming to the waveforms here once again we have two set of waveforms this is for a high value of r and therefore the alpha is large this is for the low value of r and therefore the alpha is small now let me start the discussion with the value of r as large when the value of r is large the capacitor takes more time to reach the value of vgt and therefore the thyristor will trigger at a later point in time in the positive off cycle so that is why you can see for r is equals to high this set of waveforms indicates the value of alpha is high so the alpha is greater than 90 degree here now as and when the thyristor is triggered a load voltage will appear and the thyristor will become a closed switch now coming to the second set of waveforms each is for the case when the value of r the variable resistor is very low now since the value of r is low the capacitor can charge at a much faster rate which indicates that the capacitor voltage will reach the thyristor ga uh, gate threshold voltage for a very small value of alpha itself therefore the thyristor will trigger at a very uh, lower value of alpha rather than in the case of the value of r being very large and a higher average output voltage can be obtained from the output so the uh, readers have to understand that you are going to vary the average output voltage across the load by varying the value of alpha which in turn is achieved by varying the value of the variable resistor r right finally to indicate this particular circuit is different from that of the half wave rc circuit you have to note that there is in fact a output load voltage waveform for the negative half cycle of the input supply also because it is full bridge right with that i conclude uh, the discussion on half wave as well as full wave rc triggering circuit thank you